All right, guys, what's up? <clears throat> we got our board briefing for Saturday's workout, and that's the 25th of January. Time is flying by. Let's get through winter. All right, um, workout. Rob base. 20-minute AMRAP with a partner. 50 calories on the bike. Bikes come first. Rowers and then skier is extra, okay? 100 kettlebell swings, 53, 70. And those are overhead, okay? 20 wall walks. Level two, 40 calories on the bike come first. 80 swings, overhead, um, 20 wall walks, or sorry, 14 wall walks. And then we have level one, <coughs> sorry, the kettlebells is um, 35 and 53 for that. And then level one, 30 calories on the bike or rower, um, 60 kettlebell swings, and that's at 26 and 35, and 10 inchworms to a push-up. All right, workout-wise, one more swinging and kettlebell. We're going overhead. A couple things. Let's try not to swing that kettlebell with our lower back too much. We want to drive our feet down into the floor, keeping our core tight, and getting into good posture with your arm above your head. Okay? No droopy bells. No bent arms like a T-Rex. Keep the arms extended as best we can. Um, and no droopy bell. Like So when we're overhead with that kettlebell, neutral wrist, our wrist shouldn't be bent like this. Should be straight, punching the kettlebell to the ceiling, the flat end of the kettlebell, all right? So um, as far as the kettlebell goes swings, they're overhead today as we're just talking about, and they're supposed to be heavy. So if you have, say, a limitation, oh, I can't go that high with the kettlebell because I can't keep good posture or something like that, then we think, all right, I'm going to use the same heavy kettlebell and I'm just going to do Russian swings. Is it RX? No, it's a scaling um, uh, movement. But you are getting that um, chance to use a heavier kettlebell than you would. All right, so the heavy kettlebells, the, the solid or the red ones, we got a few different red ones, okay? Uh, make sure it says 70 pounds on it. And I think there's some black with gray stripe ones that are 70s as well. All right, 53 is agreed. Wall walks. Do our best to get our feet on the wall before our hands move, because that's the standard of a wall walk, as we know in the open. We're not gonna sit there and tape the floor up and all that stuff that we did for the open. Just be honest with yourself. With my feet on the wall before I started backing my hands up, okay? The other thing, backing our hands up all the way, get our chest to the wall, then come on back down. When you come back down, try not to let your feet slide down the wall and smash your toes into the ground. That's try to walk down the wall, wall walk, okay? The other thing is, when we are getting our chest to the, the if you're doing the RX version, we want to get our chest to the wall. We don't want to have our hands, you know, a few inches or a foot away from the wall and really put that stress on our shoulders by trying to stick out our chest and arching your back. Just back your hands up just a little bit more. It'll make it one a lot easier in a stacked joint position instead of putting your body into like trying to be a contortionist, okay? Scaling option for the wall walks, partial wall walks, all right? Backing our hands up, or sorry, getting our feet on the wall, backing our hands up, um, going to a place where you feel you can maintain that um, straight arm position, locked out position, and then come back down, walking your feet down the wall. Could be two steps, could be three steps up the wall, could be three hands, it could be one hand. Let's try to do partial wall walks. When we're in the partial wall walk, we don't wanna be on the wall with our back arched. We want our hollow position. Turn those abs on, um, aka don't be like a saggy horse. Okay, so that's for um, the workouts. Now. Same with the other categories as well. Try to swing a heavier kettlebell than you're used to. Try to get inverted in those wall walks. Uh, inchworms with a push-up if we need to do push-ups from our knees as long as we can maintain that rigidity through our body, okay? Now, we're looking for um, two to three rounds, maybe upward of four if you're going. Split the repetitions however you would like. 
How are we going to get there? We have wall walk progressions. We have kettlebell um, swings. We have, this is something different. And then we have like a set, a mini set, five reps. Sorry, partner one, 30 second bike. Partner two, 30 second bike. Partner one, five kettlebell swings. Partner two, five kettlebell swings. Partner one, one wall. Partner two, one wall walk. That's our um, movement prep. And we have another bit of specific warm up, and we got the Turkish get up. All right. So we're going to go over the progressions, and then we're going to do skill work. We're going to uh, accumulate 30 reps. Now, the Turkish get up is not the muscle up, it doesn't have that kind of cachet in CrossFit. But what it does have is it has the ability to change mobility and flexibility and change stability and core strength and body awareness. All right. Let's get these Turkish get-ups in. Very healthy for the body. Um, really works wonders on your shoulder mobility and all and hips and all that stuff. All right, guys? That's our day in a nutshell. Let's have some fun. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Enjoy.